Hello, everyone. So moved and grateful for this opportunity to get on my knees and praise Louis Tomlinson for like 30 minutes straight. And in honor of that, yeah, I am wearing the lesbian Louis t-shirt that I wore to Pride. I don't think anything else better captures my energy. Nothing else ever will like this shirt does. And this is all in honor of today's video where we're going to be talking about the documentary, All of Those Voices, of course, by Louis Tomlinson. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. So great to have you. My name is Jasmine, currently a music business student, part-time artist manager and diehard fangirl, particularly for the boys of One Direction. I've been a Louis girl since 2011, so imagine my shock when I found out that we were going to be seeing him on the big screen, like a whole Louis-centric film on the big screen, not Amazon Prime, the movie theater, surrounded by other Louis. Imagine my shock. <laughs> and let me just tell you, I was not prepared for the amount of shaking and sobbing and crying that was gonna go on for me during this movie. Exhibit A, here it is, okay? And the second the documentary was over, I knew I just had to make a YouTube video exploring what happened and my thoughts on it. So that's what this video is. I'm also going to be reading you guys some of my favorite letterbox reviews that I came across for all those voices. And I'm gonna be doing a little bit of complaining about how poorly this project was promoted. It was like a lot of praise with a healthy dose of me being a hater. But before we get into all that, of course, first we're going to take a look at the documentary itself. So most of the beginning of all of those voices is Louis reflecting on his time in One Direction, how close the band was, and like how unbelievable all the things they accomplished together were. But I think the primary point of highlighting One Direction was to get to the part where they were over so they could portray how unprepared Louis was for the band to end. Now this is the point in the movie where I personally began my sobbing. Like there was a lot of sobbing throughout the whole thing, but where it began was right here when they talked about the end of One Direction. Lucky for me, the girly who was sat next to me wrapped up in a One Direction blanket was also sobbing throughout the whole movie. Like we were just taking turns sniffling back and forth. So I'm, I'll never forget you, girl. Lucky for that. I just felt so seen. But my crying, yeah, it began when they were talking about the end of One Direction. And I think it's just like, we always kind of knew that Louis was unprepared for the end of One Direction. But to hear him talk about it in detail like that and directly how it upset him and hearing other people share their accounts of how much it upset him, it just really hit me. He was just not ready to say goodbye to One Direction. He just like me for real. Uh. But yeah, not only was he like unprepared for One Direction to end, he said it himself that he was angry. And I think so much of that comes from his next little point in the documentary is that he couldn't see himself as a solo artist. He said himself he could see Liam going solo, he could see Harry going solo, but that wasn't a position he ever imagined himself in. And when you think about it, and especially if you see the rest of this documentary, I think not being able to see himself as a solo artist makes sense considering how underestimated he was in One Direction. He told a story in this documentary that rocked me to the core, to say the least, but he said he wanted a solo on that second single because he didn't get one on What Makes You Beautiful. So he worked with the producer on his vocal so he could get better and do better and have a solo just for that producer to turn around and give the solo to Harry instead. Meaning Louis did all that hard work for nothing not only that but he was probably excited expecting to get another solo working really hard thinking he was doing something important and special just to have that like ripped away from him i'm sick i'm sick right now that producer if i ever see you in the street oh but yeah, so much of the beginning of this documentary centers around Louis just feeling really unconfident, underestimated, and not good enough. And it just felt so real. Like, again, we knew that Louis didn't get a lot of solos on Up All Night. Like, that was a whole thing. The fandom was really upset about that when it even first happened. And then for years later, that's been a thing. But this was the first time that we really got to see firsthand how deeply that affected him. Like, it goes so much deeper than you could imagine. It's not just him feeling underestimated, but in all those voices, he also literally said he felt like he didn't have a place in the band and didn't understand what he was there for like there was like saying it out loud it just makes it even crazier to me like he wasn't just feeling unconfident and underestimated he didn't even know why the fuck he was there and that is just so crazy to me because I feel like I and a lot of other people have always seen Louis as the glue of One Direction the glue that holds them together with the way that Louis was kind of behaving even over the years not even just in the beginning but with the way he was behaving in One Direction in general you would never be able to tell that he felt like he didn't have a place in the band Louis was literally so much of One Direction, even when he wasn't having the most solos, like all the most memorable moments, funniest moments, One Direction inside jokes, like 99% of all of those are just Louis, like single-handedly, again, not just in the beginning, but throughout their time as a band, <laughs> might as well be a, a reel of Louis. 
Louis was just everything and everywhere. And I feel like Louis girls were also really prevalent. Everyone always talks about the presence of Louis girls now and like how fierce and dedicated they are. But I feel like Louis girls were really prevalent like that back in the One Direction days too. So that's why it's just a little bit wild to me that he felt like he didn't have a place in the band. But he did explain that he found his place in the band through suggesting that they write their own music and then being the one with the most writing credits across their albums. In fact, he said one of his proudest moments was having the most songwriting credits in One Direction and there's this video that I eat up every time I come across it like I cannot not hit play this video of an interviewer like acknowledging that Louis is the songwriter I'm gonna play it this album shows a lot of growth for you guys what one song would you say really as a band you guys identify especially you I mean your name is next to like every track what song would you guys say you really identify like my favorite thing is when people tell Louis to his face what he needs to hear. Like there was that one video of a meet and greet where a fan went up to Louis and said that his voice adds so much to One Direction is so unique and special and Louis was just smiling. Like I love it when a bitch tells Louis what he needs to hear. So yeah, I'm really glad that Louis mentioned in this documentary that he has the most writing credits and that he's really proud of that because I feel like that was a huge turning point for the documentary and Louis himself. He deserves to be recognized as a great songwriter, not just from One Direction, but also in his solo music. He is an amazing songwriter and I'd love to see him owning that. And I would love to see a lot of other people in the general public own that too. I mean, he also deserved solos in One Direction. He also deserves for people to realize how unique and beautiful his voice is too. Like he doesn't have to be confined to being a great songwriter. He's a great vocalist as well. And I just wish someone was around to tell little baby Louie that. Not baby Louie, but you know, 18 year old Louie. Might as well be fucking baby Louie, okay? But with Louis like finding himself in kind of writing all these songs for One Direction, he started to feel a lot more comfortable, obviously, and was having a great time. There was a point in the documentary where he said he felt like a god coming off of stage. So that just takes me right back to how hard it was for him to leave that behind. I just feel like a lot of people can't begin to register and process how hard it actually was for One Direction to end as a band. And this documentary kind of helps. This documentary made it like a really big deal that One Direction was breaking up. Like they showed us everything that was going on backstage and behind the scenes. And even Louis' sister Lottie had a scene where she was talking about how badly it affected everyone that day. They were so fucked and sick in the head for playing history like they did during that One Direction's last time as a band thing. And they fucking played history while showing old clips of One Direction. Sick and twisted. But it just shows how monumental One Direction was and how hard it was when they came to an end for the people who were there. I mean, it was hard for us too, believe me. But then I try to put myself in Louis' shoes, you know what I mean? And I can't imagine like feeling so underestimated as it is. And then struggling to find my place and then finding my place. And then all of a sudden, you know, this thing that I love is being taken away from me unexpectedly. And I can't even see myself doing it on my own. But I put myself in Louis' shoes and I try to imagine that happening and I just can't. So it's like no wonder he couldn't imagine himself having a solo career. You know what I mean? That would be really hard to imagine. But we learned in the documentary it was his manager who suggested that he try it. And he ended up having to consult with his mom. Which is just such a hard concept for me to grasp. I remember thinking about this when I was sitting in the movie theater, like trying to grasp the concept of like Louis just not doing music anymore and what life would be like for him if he decided not to go solo. It's a scary, dark thought to have, but I just feel like he was so made for it. His songwriting is so amazing. The way that he performs when he's in his element and as he's grown and like getting up in the crowd and like really doing his thing, really getting into the music as he finds himself more. His music in general and even the progression from Wall to faith in the future was so big and so crazy and so good so just like imagine what he's going to keep doing i can't imagine louis not having all of that like he's such a good artist he's so good as an artist and he loves what he does so i just cannot imagine a world where he just like never pursued his solo music but at the same time i could completely understand why he wouldn't because shortly after he lost One Direction, he lost his mom. And then he lost his sister, as we see in this documentary. It really did seem like every odd was stacked against him at that point. And the way that the documentary portrayed that was so raw and real. Actually, I think a lot of things about this documentary feel really raw and real like that. Like after the section when he was exploring all this loss, there was a few scenes where he was like openly communicating his lack of pride and confidence in his solo career. Like just openly admitting it. 
There was a scene with his vocal coach who is a living, breathing angel among men. That woman is so good for him. I love the relationship. What she brought to this film was amazing. But there was a scene where he was talking to her and he was just like openly criticizing his own performance, putting himself down for his performances and hearing himself go out of tune, those kind of things. And those are the things to me that feel so raw and real. That's exactly why I said this documentary feels like that. Because he did have those moments where he was just like openly criticizing himself. All in the name of like getting to see the progression from that to when he finally feels worthy that's how the documentary progresses and it's beautiful and amazing and it gives me chills but I just feel like it would take so much to be able to open up about the things you don't like about yourself especially on a global scale like I'm sad and insecure I would never talk about the things that I hate about myself and Louis criticized himself in front of millions just to show how it used to be for him and how he used to feel and show all this growth that he has done over time mm, that's my absolute favorite thing about this documentary is how it goes from Louis being torn up about One Direction then feeling really uncertain in his solo career to seeing his impact and then finally feeling worthy literally the most beautiful progression and it's like you can see when these moments happen for him like through each stage the uncertainty to kind of seeing his impact feeling worthy the scene where he sees his impact uh love her he literally is in Mexico and there's these huge, big crowds of people waiting outside for him with all these posters screaming and yelling and crying. And he just has this big smile on his face as he steps outside to greet them. And that's like the moment in the film when he says, like, I'm causing a fucking scene. <laughs> like, yeah, you're causing a scene. I'm unfortunately on Stan Twitter and have been since the dawn of time. So I do remember the day that this happened in real time, not in the documentary, but there was like a bunch of clips and videos coming out from fans who are there in those crowds. And Louis just looked so happy. It was like concrete proof that he could still be doing these things even outside of One Direction because he can. I loved that this documentary had so much footage of like his time on tour included too because showing the tour footage showed his monumental impact that I don't think a lot of people realize is there. We got to see people camping in the streets for days on end for him. We got to see huge arenas just absolutely packed and filled up for him. We got to see crazy fan projects and his car getting mobbed. Just like all those things you would expect in a One Direction documentary, but Louis was doing it on his own. You don't have to be sorry for doing it on your own. Wow. Okay. I just don't think people in the general public can grasp and understand how big and successful his first solo world tour was. So I'm just really glad that all of that footage could be a part of this documentary so that people can really see that impact girl. And I also loved the tour footage because you got to see so much of Louis's relationship with his band. They seem so close. They seem to bond really well. And his band loves him. In the documentary, his band members were like stressing how down to earth he was by comparing working for him to working for bands they have previously. And they would say things like, oh, usually artists would turn the back lounge into their personal bedroom, but not Louis. He sleeps in the bunks like everyone else. Or they would say, in other bands, it was weird for the band members to come into the singer's dressing room, but not Louis. He's not like that. They describe him as a down-to-earth guy from Doncaster that loves what he does. And that's such a sweet way to describe him. Actually, every person in this documentary talks about Louis with the utmost love and respect. It's like everyone that meets him falls deeply for him. And it's literally my favorite thing. I could talk about this all day. This could be a video essay in itself. Interviewers and opening acts and people on his team, they all just have such lovely, lovely things to say about him. And it makes me so proud to be a fan. Which speaking of fans, um, another huge part of this documentary was Louis stressing how much he loves his fans and how much the relationship he has with them defines him. He stresses that we need him and he needs us. And there was this amazing quote that really stuck with me from the documentary where I think it was his security guard said something like, Louis took the best core of One Direction fans and like brought them over to his own fandom. What did I say about Louis? Louis were like that in One Direction too. You're so right. There is nothing like a Louis. I'm telling you. I've been in fan spaces for so fucking long and I've analyzed and seen so many fan artist relationships and there's not one like Louis and Louise. 
I can't even get into this. Louise would literally chop an arm and a leg off for him. They love him so deeply and are so deeply dedicated to supporting him. And I think some of that does come from him being like an underdog that made it out on top. He was always so doubted and misunderstood and yet Louise always saw him for exactly who he is and saw how special what he brought to the table was. So now his fans are just so fiercely loyal and protective. Overall, the way this documentary painted Louis is just so, so important because he's been misreported on in the media for years and a lot of people in the GP have just the weirdest opinions and views about him sometimes and all those voices just does a really good job of showing who he is as a person and an artist like if someone asked me why I would die for him I would just send him to the theater honestly I love the clips that we get and all those voices of Louis just being himself and doing what he does, like doing shots and doing random dances, hanging out with his friends, being the best big brother in the world. It's just the best of both worlds. As a person, as an artist, both ways, he's just the best person, the most resilient, brave, and powerful. Louis has been through literally everything. He's been through it all and he still has such an amazing career and mindset and stamina and gratitude. I absolutely love the part in all those voices when his vocal coach Helene says that he walks around all tough but he's really gentle and sensitive <coughs> that was me throwing the fuck up okay now after spreading all of that love and joy I get to be a hater like I said at the beginning of this video there wasn't a ton of things I had a problem with in this movie really the only thing that I didn't really like was when there was a scene where there was a bunch of white people talking about Latin American fans and how dedicated they are and talking about the fan culture there when they could have gotten a local person to do it. Like, am I missing something? I don't understand why they wouldn't have someone from Latin America like talking about their own fan culture scratching my head. And the other problem I have with this project is obviously how poorly it was promoted. There was a few social media platforms for all those voices. I think it was Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. They all had all those voices platforms, but they barely did anything. And when they did post things, they were very targeted at Louis that already exist, who would already definitely be seeing this film. I would have liked them to do a better job at drawing in the general public and trying to get some other people to come and see what it's all about. I personally would have bought more ad space for all those voices so we didn't have to deal with fan-made billboards. Not that they aren't lovely and great, but why are the fans doing it? I would have also dropped a trailer closer to when the project was announced and not literally two seconds before tickets went on sale. Not even dropping the trailer, but saying you would drop it if the fans got a hashtag trending. What? <laughs> there could have been some little appearances to talk about what to expect from the film. I feel like something a lot of people didn't like that I saw was that we didn't really know what it was gonna be about. They were just like the documentary and it wasn't promoted in a way that suggested what was gonna happen in it. We weren't sure if it was a tour documentary or a tell all or whatever. They could have gotten some cool like Instagram and Snapchat filters and stickers for this. I saw a few fan made ones, but like official ones. Could have done a cool promo website. You know, the One Direction boys love a promo website could have done something where you can generate some kind of all of your name's voices, all of Jasmine's voices, you know, something like that with a design on it, a printable something, you know? I don't know. It just felt like a project. They were very lazy about it because they were like, oh, the Louis will go see it. And that was just enough for them when it could have been so much more. Okay, and now for shits and giggles and funsies, I'm gonna read you some of my favorite letterbox reviews of all those voices that I saw. If you don't know what letterbox is, the girls love letterbox, you need to get it. It's for movies, TV shows sometimes, but mostly movies. On your profile, you could put your top five, like absolute favorite movies so that people can see when they come on your page. And you can make lists with them that are kind of like Spotify playlists, like you can name them fun things for different seasons, like a fall movie playlist, a Christmas movie playlist, like that kind of thing. But the most fun feature is reviewing and giving movie stars. Not really like actually reviewing movies like critically, but just saying something fun and stupid. That's my favorite part of Letterbox. So here are some reviews of all of those voices. Whoever played Louis was really convincing. A documentary mostly about how gay Louis fan base is. This movie sucks. Every time I try to jerk off to Louis, they cut to Ollie, <laughs> which is a play on the original letterbox review of This Is Us that said, this movie sucks. Every time I try to jack off to Louis, it cuts to a fan. Stick it to our roots, you guys. I love him so much. I'm so proud of him. He's also so sexy. No, like he had me questioning if I should eat my lesbian flag or not a few times when I was in that theater. The fact that they just opened the whole movie with him shirtless with his scar from when he broke his arm. That scene of him in Iceland double fisting beer just in the water. That scene of 2015 Louis backstage with no shirt on. 
that scene of him singing his lower register, what the fuck? Someone said, I love my husband. That is just so true. Five stars, because there was a lot of Louis in it. I love him so much, I wish British people were real. My favorite part is the one where he shows the penguin tattooed on his ass, but even the scene where he does a triple backflip is pretty good. That was my favorite scene too, when he showed that penguin on his ass. Man brought together more lesbians than pride itself. <laughs> I'm actually going to see it again today. Like today is my second round in like 20 minutes right after I film this, I have to leave for the theater and I will be wearing lesbian Louis shirt there. So we'll see if I make any besties. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Last time I cried like this was when I was born for real. Real. I like the part where Louis was smoking a joint in bed. That's my man for real. Shout out to all the 20 year olds who had a Louis doll in this movie I feel seen. No, because people brought their Louis doll to my theater. I see Louis dolls all the time, not even just Louis. I see Niall dolls a lot too. Um, at One Direction club nights, concerts, and now movies. So have no fear, we do be having the One Direction dolls. Crying over a man is never okay, unless that man is Louis Tomlinson. This one's my personal favorite. I actually think Louis Tomlinson should have the legal rights to kill Simon Cowell. Like, you get it. You just get it. Letterbox is never gonna let me down. I feel like there's a million and one more things I could say about all those voices. <sighs> I'm sure I'm missing some points, but that was my little brain dump. I'm just so proud of Louis as always. I'm always proud of Louis, but sometimes I have these moments where it just hits me so intensely. And I feel like this entire movie was one of those moments. I do want to do like a long video about Louis's career, not just all those voices, but I want to talk about his music and his career so far and his role in One Direction and all those things kind of like I did for Niall. So let me know if you're interested in a full solo Louis video. Thank you guys for watching me talk about all those voices. You can check down the description box for all of my social medias. I recently just rebranded a bunch of my bios. So go check them out, see what you think. Let me know if you like them. You can also use the link in my description to request a video topic. If you have something specific you want me to talk about, go leave it down there. I hope you're all doing amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Drinking all the water, thriving. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.